Spiders, sharks, snakes, and algebra. Now these are four things that students find quite scary. I can't do much to help you out with the first three, but I do have a way to make algebra less daunting for your students. So hang around for after the intro. Hi, my name's Tom Moore and I'm a maths teacher. And I found that when students came to learn algebra for the very first time, they quite often feared it. Now I'm not sure why this is. Maybe it's because of movies or what they'd heard from their siblings, but they always came with some strange fear of it without even having seen it before. This video is going to help you to see how you can possibly help minimize those fears when working with your students. Now here's the thing about fear. We all know that the best way to tackle it is head on. For example, I hate heights, but I know that if I want to ever get over that fear, the only way I can do this is by going up the tallest building or up a tall tree and slowly taking a look over the edge. And this actually does help me every single time I go and do that to make me feel a little bit more comfortable with the whole situation. Algebra is very much the same. Instead of just drip feeding skill by skill, the best way to help students overcome this fear is by giving them a whole range of skills in a very short period of time so that they can see how they all interact together. This here is a size one box. It's called a size one box because every single face has just one square on it. If I pull it apart, you'll see that my size one box is made up of six pieces. Whereas a size two box has got two on each side and then one on the ends. It doesn't have the one in the middle because it needs to be able to connect. Now if I pull this apart, you'll see that it's made up of 10 pieces. A size three box looks like this. A size three box has three parts long here, 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 and here, but also one on the ends. And if I pull that apart, it's obviously going to have three going along that way. This is made up of 14 pieces. Now this is the very beginning of how to introduce algebra. I love using manipulatives like these because it really helps students to see the connections between the real world and the abstract world of algebra. Once we get students to deal with the physical component of the lesson, that is what you can see in these shapes here, we can get them to start making links to the abstract world of algebra. And to do this, we're going to use a technique that mathematicians use all the time. And we love getting students to work like mathematicians. And that is to use a table of values like you can see here. So I've drawn out these two rows with some columns as well. And you can see that I've got my box size and my number of squares. Now, if we think about this, my size one box here would have six squares, as you can see. My size two box had 10 squares, and my size three box here in the red had 14. Now at this point, some students might recognize a bit of a pattern that is happening. For example, they might see that it's going up by ones here and by fours here. So that means this would become four and five, and then for a size four, we would have 18, and for a size five, we would have 22 squares. That's great. If students can start to see patterns already, then they are on the right track to being able to successfully use algebra. So this is where we start to get students to actually think about how these numbers relate to each other. What I mean by that is, how do these numbers in the top row relate to the numbers in the bottom row? Before they were looking across, whereas now we want them to look from the top to the bottom, the top to the bottom, as you can see there. So to help them see this pattern, I might ask something along the lines of, well, how many squares will I need to make a size 10 box? And the reason I do this is because it actually helps them to see what's happening rather than having to make it themselves. They need to maybe make a prediction as part of the process. And this is how it works. When dealing with a size three box, they can see that there's three going along here. That is, we have four lots of three that will fold up to make the length. And then of course we have the two on the ends. For a size two box, we have four lots of two that fold up like that. So many students will recognize that for a size 10 box, we're going to need to have four rows of 10 and then the two on the ends. So if we have four rows of 10 and two on the ends, that's going to be four times 10 and then add the two to find out the number of squares. So of course for a size 10 box, we will have 42 squares. And at this point here, we can simply put it on the table like this. I love this table tool because it's a great way to help us keep track of our thinking and look back for patterns in our results. Now it's at this point that students will have started to think about what is actually happening in a generalized form. 
That is, once they've thought about how many squares it will take to make a size 10 box, they will have imagined that in their head. So I'll actually ask them, what happens if I made another size box, and maybe even larger, and then get them to explain to me in words what they're doing. And what you'll quite often find is when they explain it to you in words, they'll say, well, it's the box size times four, because it doesn't matter how big the box is gonna be, there's going to be four rows of it, and then you're going to add two on the end, and that's going to tell us the number of squares. At this point, I get really excited because students are now starting to see things in a generalized form, but they don't yet know that they're doing algebra. And this is where you can make that nice quick link that really helps them to see the benefits of using algebra. I'll show you what I mean. Instead of writing box size, I tell them, we can use a letter because a letter is a lot easier to write out all of this and all of this. So I might use the letter B, as you can see I've just done. And instead of writing number of squares, I might use another letter, for example, N. From here, all we need to do is get students to recognise that box size and number of squares, we can really save time on writing this. So instead of writing box size here, we can just say B times four, because box size we've now called B, plus two is equal to number of squares, which we called N. And now we're dealing with algebra. We can obviously rearrange and simplify this as well to write four B plus two is equal to N. And we're starting to get students to see how we simplify things. So now that we have an algebraic rule, we can use this to do a whole range of things. For example, I might ask students, how many squares will it take to make a 1,000 size box? Now, we don't obviously have 1,000 squares, so students will have to use the algebraic rule in order to be able to do this. And it'll actually help them to see the benefits of using algebra over using the concrete model, because obviously algebra will save them so much time in the long run. We can also get students to work backwards. That is, we might say we have 4,002 squares. What size box can we make? I generally find that having something that they've done that's hands-on first will help them to visualise what's actually occurring when they're working backwards. So that when you show them how it works with the algebra, they can actually see the process already. And of course, once we have an algebraic rule, we can use the rule to sketch a graph. Or we can even just use the table of values. So students are actually seeing how the rule relates to substitution, to solving and to sketching graphs all at the same time, whilst having the one concrete model in their mind. In her book, Mathematical Mindsets, Jo Bowler discusses a fantastic way that you can get students to really bring all of this together, and that's through using algebra posters. It involves drawing out the physical model and then breaking this down to really show what's happening using different colours. For example, you can see here the two ends that were always consistent are highlighted in yellow. And that is consistent throughout each of the three different pictures that's going on here. That is the numbers that we're working with, the table of values, and also the graphs. Then the blue parts that are going up by fours each time, where well you can see that that is also consistent in each one of these images. By really highlighting this to students, it helps them to make connections between the physical model, but also the way that the algebra is coming to life through both the graph, the table of values, and working with the numbers. So using this model and the algebraic poster really gets students to represent their thinking in many different ways. And we know from Joe Bowler's work that doing this really helps to form deeper connections within their brains so that they're more likely to learn it and remember it in the future. So there you have it, a fantastic way to introduce algebra. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also share this video with your colleagues so that they can use it. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.